Dutchy Boom, Diggy, Doggy, and Little Monster went almost stormy night to the purple castle of the witches. Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. It's been a while, hasn't it? Probably since June 26th or 27th, around there. Um, just haven't been finding a whole lot online or in person. It's been pretty dry out there once again. Um, so now I'm finally back with a nice stack. And As you guys saw in my last video, I went on a Sioux Falls trip. And it was pretty nice. Um, not the best outcome overall for records, but the main purpose was just to have a getaway trip, you know. And um, it was much needed, so it's been pretty nice having a whole week off. And I'm finally back to uh, listen to some of these. And I've listened to pretty much all of them, except for maybe a couple, but um, we shall dive into them. A couple of these I'm really happy to stumble upon. Um, not sure if they're going to be keepers or not, but uh, they're definitely some interesting items. So I do have a couple online finds I'm going to start with first. And um, even before I get to them, I do have, an, for my next update, I do have a couple more coming in the mail. I have a couple UK originals, which I'm pretty stoked about. A couple nice heavy hitters, so stay tuned for that. So for this first one here, um, this is one that I just was kind of streaming on one of my walks one afternoon. And I um, was kind of really digging it at the time. I probably haven't heard it in like five years or so, ever since my college days. But... I do remember liking it. I remember it having a lot of, you know, fuzz guitar and stuff, stuff of that nature. And again, trying to branch out of the U.S. a little bit. And even though it's a reissue, I'm still very glad to uh, hop up on this one. So this is Soul and Pepper by the St. Thomas Pepper Smelter. These guys were based out of Peru area, um, and I think they were known as Los Shanes before this. And this is them kind of an incognito, sort of like an underground elk album that they produced and it's mostly consisted of cover songs from the era stuff like Iron Butterfly, Cream, Hendrix. Um, there's probably like a couple original tracks on here but they also kind of rip off like some famous tunes at the time like Purple Haze they do a track kind of reminiscent of that but yeah um, do very they do very good cover versions on here including In A De Vida uh, it's like a five minute version on there. They even do like the drum solo for like a short minute. Uh, Strange Brew. They do Flavors Heart Teaser. Kind of the middle of, of the albums like where I really like it. Um, they even do a version of the Music Machines, The People In Me. I almost think this is like the superior version compared to the original almost. Um, it's that good. And they do a version of Hendrix's Can You See Me on here which has some like dueling fuzz guitar on both both speakers so um, nice blend of like compact organ mixed with a lot of stingray sort of sounds like stingray fuzz guitar sounds very stingy it's kind of the way I describe it uh, but yeah pretty consistent overall pretty solid release I wouldn't say it's like anything super crazy or out there but um, these Peruvians man they got quite a erratic tone to them and they have a lot of energy going for this album so um, strap in tight <laughs> Disco's Monterey label which I think is based out of Spain I think it's Gearson related label and it just came out last year so yeah pretty solid release glad to pick it up finally sound quality is superior the hype sticker if you guys want to read that my fingers out of the way there um, so yeah recommended uh, this next one though is kind of a nice surprise I did pay up for this one but this had been forever on my want list for like a whole year and I was trying to wait for a copy to pop up and I was like well I'm pretty sure Dis Discogs is gonna like block this soon enough but so this is a bootleg. Um, if you guys know the band Sparks, uh, they first started as Half Nelson, and they just recently had a new documentary come out, The Sparks Brothers, which I am curious to see. Um, I'm sure they probably talk about these early days, but um, 
So I'm not much of a Sparks fan. I do appreciate, like, I do admire their style for how quirky they are and just all the different, just all the different avenues they have went through. And I think they've made, like, at least over 20 albums. And uh, so this is a bootleg. And as you can see, this is like a photo outtake of their album, Camino My Home. Uh, it's not the original album art, but it's the, it's like another alternate take. And this is basically uh, demos from like the pre-Half Nelson days. Well, they were known as Half Nelson, but uh, it's before their LP came about on Bearsville. This is basically just titled A Woofer in Tweeter's Clothing Demos. Which is basically all it is. I don't think, I don't think these demos actually had a, an official name to them. But they only released like one acetate full of these demos and over the years they've kind of gotten some recognition like through CDRs and different bootlegs that people have had. But it's never had an official vinyl release and so this is like a still an unofficial vinyl release of these demos recorded back in like 1969 and uh, surprisingly the sound quality on this is pretty excellent. I was kind of kind of sketchy about the how the sound was going to be but you know it's already kind of a crude recording you know very lo-fi in nature but it actually sounded pretty good and I had to turn it up a little bit but the clarity was where I was uh, concerned about and it's pretty good so it's got all the lyrics on the back and only a couple tracks on here would later go on to their debut album which is uh, this cover here Half Nelson and those tracks are Roger and what's the other one it's on here. Saccharin and the War. So, as you can imagine, you know, during the 60s, it definitely has like a psychedelic flavor going throughout. The uh, best way I can describe this in one sentence, it kind of sounds like if Sid Barrett left Pink Floyd and wanted to go like this kind of theatrical, artsy, pop psych kind of vein, this is probably what it ended up sounding like. It's very UK inspired, especially uh, the way the vocals are delivered and just the way the quirkiness, you know, Sparks from the beginning always kind of had this kind of quirky, zany bond about them too. And, um, you know, of course there's a couple other members featured here playing drums and um, bass. I think there was four members in the beginning. But, um, yeah, some excellent variety of, like, pop psych, some uh, very haunting, like, psych rock. Um, Stuff like The Factory, Jane Church is very gothic sounding, got some fantastic like gothic organ sounds, uh, some nice fuzz leads, Arts and Crafts Spectacular, Johnny's Adventure, um, very, very cool stuff. It's not very catchy at first either, but once you listen to these tracks a little bit more, they uh, kind of grow on you. So I did upload the full demos LP on my other channel, Cosmic Minds. And that's like my most viewed video. So if you guys want to check that out, um, I do recommend it. It's actually pretty neat. Um, very oddly structured songs and lyric-wise too. But um, you can just tell how ahead of the curve these guys were for their time. So um, recommend it. Absolutely. I'll probably feature one of these songs in a future video mix down the road. I wish they used like the original intended idea which was um, over the years people have come up with these different art designs where it was supposed to be like the surfer riding down the Eiffel Tower and uh, I wish they kind of used that idea instead of like people thinking this is like some Camino My House outtakes or something you know but I was glad to acquire it. It was the only copy for sale and I found out about it pretty quickly so I just hopped on that bad boy <laughs> so very glad about that so um, on to the stuff I found in Sioux Falls um, I will share the two that are most interesting and starting with this one so I learned a little bit more last night having looked it up on Instagram under a different hashtag because that's what we use these days is hashtags to search for stuff you know and uh, so I'll share it here this is John the Baptist a rock opera this came out in 1973, and just, just on the cover alone, I flipped through this, and I found this in Yankton, South Dakota, on my way back from Sioux Falls, and uh, found this antique shop, and 
down in the basement, I, this is like the first one I discovered, and I was like, it's kind of an interesting cover, you know. If you look at the cover closely, you can see there's a haunting, staring face in there, which may or may not be Jesus, I don't know, but <laughs> maybe John the Baptist. But uh, the interesting thing about this record, though, it's a 2LP set, privately pressed, and I was kind of looking in the inner gate bolt here, and I thought, there's something going on here. What is it? So then I was reading like some of the captions and stuff, and it says, These photographs were taken at actual performances at the Indiana State Prison and not the recording session. So I was thinking, what? Why are they recording this in the state prison? Well, it turns out uh, this guy here is an actual inmate from the Indiana State Prison, and this is like the reverend from the prison from the prison and they they got together they collaborated and started like they hired like 30 inmates to participate and act and perform uh, this sort of like rock opera um, in the state prison prison <laughs> um, there's no way else to sum it up with, except for that you know it's it's kind of bizarre isn't it and they hired like these four outside ladies to kind of like, you know, be part of the play because apparently they had no like female inmates at the time or something. And I also read like there's a few news articles online as well that I read that talked about these performances and they said that, you know, barely had any guard supervision or um, anything like that. And there was like free admission for the local communities to come and watch this play. Um, that the inmates have performed, so it's just a lot of weird ideas running through it, you know? So, and this is Ernie Howard, who was the prisoner there, and he apparently had some background, you know, he's pretty knowledgeable with writing music, so the fact he could get all these inmates to uh, actually behave themselves and, like, you know, carry this whole thing out is just astonishing to me. So, um, as you can imagine, the sessions themselves sound very loose and very spiritual in, in a way. And musically, it's kind of in the vein of, like, soul jazz, but there's also, like, a lot of instrumental, just kind of spiritual jazz sounds, I guess you could say. I'm not a jazz enthusiast, so I can't really come up with the great terms to describe it, except that, like I said, it's very um, spiritual in sound. It's got a very natural, kind of organic flow about it. Not that it's necessarily good, but uh, it kind of pulls off in some ways, and then some of the singers, whether they be inmates or maybe the females that were hired for this job, um, they probably need to work on their their vibrato a little bit, but <laughs> um, otherwise, pretty interesting find, and I found out this is kind of collectible, so I was glad to pick this up. Um, and uh, talk about it. So I also did put like four clips on my other channel, Cosmic Minds, if you guys want to check that out, get a taste of what it sounds like. And then this was the other find that I found interesting. So I had never come across this online either, but this cover just really struck me as like, this, this might have some potential. And this is Today's Renaissance with their album One Point of View. And I thought maybe it was like a Christian effort. I don't think it is. I think it's just a just sort of like a, a group here. They may be a Christian group, I don't know. I didn't detect any, you know, Christian tones on here, but... Um, so I read up online, there was kind of like soft rock, some psych rock, and I was like, ooh, maybe there's something in store for me. Of course, I couldn't find any clips online, so I did upload a couple of the better tracks on here. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward pop. It's sort of a soft rock kind of sound. But it's nothing, you know, nothing terrible, nothing unbearable, I should say. Um, kind of a mixed bag of, like, I hear little bits of Our Generation, if you guys know that Christian site group, Our Generation, mixed with um, the Free Design. It's kind of got this kind of breezy pop sound. Uh, but like I said, it's kind of straightforward in some spots, but there are a couple standouts on here um, that I did upload, so... And they were based out of the Sioux Falls area as well, so kind of makes sense that I would find this. Um, 
So it looks like it's sold for over 100 in the past, so pretty glad to scoop this up. It looks like it does have some warping issues, unfortunately. Um, not near the ridge, but like in the disc itself, like in the middle here. It's got some warping, but it didn't affect playback, so thankfully. Um, so it's kind of a nice thing to scoop up. Okay, and then on to the stuff that I actually found in Sioux Falls. Um, this is one that I picked up on the last day I was there at a place called Last Stop, which, you know, is a fitting title for that place since it was my last stop. Uh, this is Quintessence, with their second, it's their uh, second self-titled album on the Island label. Got this under 10 bucks, so I was like, you know, might as well take a chance on it. Um, I had actually never heard any of their stuff before because Every time I'd see this cover online or just read reviews about it, very few reviews I've read, just kind of rubbed me off as like sort of a second tier UK progressive rock band that I thought maybe, you know, kind of sound kind of corny or something. But to my surprise, this is actually one of my more favorite pickups. Um, I was streaming this in the car on the way back, coming back home, and I was like, wow, this is heavier than I ever thought it would be, you know? So it's got kind of a nice pop-up cover there. Um, you can know, just look at that all day almost. Um, I'm sure a lot of people like probably hung this in their bedroom back in the day or something. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much with this album, there's a lot of themes going on. Very, a lot of Christian themes and also a lot of like Middle Eastern, you know, sort of like ancient mythological um, beliefs on here. And this is this also came out in 1970, so they did have one album prior to this, which I guess is pretty similar, which I have yet to hear. I'm actually kind of curious now, but um, lots of raga and lots of psychedelia coming throughout this entire album. There is a few, you know, mild progressive moves for sure, but um, this is just this one stunned me way more than I thought it would. It's got a lot of jamming going on couple life cuts which are the most jammy um, some nice fuzz wah going through it um, semi complex arrangements but the thing about this one is the consistency for me I think it just opens and closes perfectly like as a whole um, just fantastic so it's a UK band um, even though there's all these different kind of like ethnicities running throughout you know giving them a lot of different flavors on here. I think my favorite track is probably the third one, um, High on Mount Kalish. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not. The third track. That one is super deep and trippy. Just what I'm into. So yeah, if you guys want to check this one out, this is probably one that I probably recommend the most out of this, uh, this coming bunch. So, Quintessence. This one, this one rubbed off way better than I thought it would. So, very happy about that pickup. Uh, this is the first one I picked up um, when I arrived there that last Saturday, or two Saturdays ago now. Um, this is one I've been wanting a long time, but just was kind of waiting on to find a copy in person, and the time has finally arrived. So, this is Brewer and Shipley with their first debut album down in L.A. It's on the A&M label, which is kind of interesting because um, they never had el any albums on A&M after this. Um, I don't think this one sold very well when it first came out, if I remember correctly. But there are songs that a lot of artists would later cover and, you know, songs like Truly Right. I know Nitty Gritty Dirt Band did that song in sort of like a psychedelic vein. And Keeper of the Keys, of course, H.P. Lovecraft did, these guys wrote. Um, they wrote pretty much every track on here, and they were backed by the Wrecking Crew, or most members of the Wrecking Crew, people like Hal Blaine and uh, Leon Russell. Um, so they got a lot of backing production on here, and it's very L.A.-inspired, sort of like, if I had to describe it, sort of like, um, you know, just pretend you're drifting along in this uh, VW bus, like, driving through the hills, you know, in the different forests, the landscapes around LA from from LA to like Utah or something. It kind of gives me that kind of visual when I listen to this music. It's very, it just kind of pours out naturally. 
uh, the sounds do. Um, so my favorite tracks probably include like She Thinks She's a Woman. It's got some nice harpsichord, kind of in a pop psych realm. And Green Bamboo. Uh, it's a very chill, very chill track. And this whole album, it's got a very chill and very visceral sound to it. Um, so very, very cool cheapy. Uh, if you spot this for like 10 bucks and under, definitely grab it. It's, it's a good one. Um, <clears throat> so these next ones, I'm probably not going to talk about too much longer since I don't know a whole lot of info on these, but Musica Orbis, this is like a private LP um, to the listeners. Of course, that cover caught my eye, and I was like, well, I'll take a chance on it for 10 bucks." And this is like a different variation of the original. I think most copies have like a line through the to the listeners. This one does not. It's still partially in the shrink. Um, this one, I've only listened to it once. It's sort of like a progressive jazz rock thing. they got a lot of diverse styles going for it. Um, some of it almost sounds like new age music. I mean, you know, sort of in the vein of like Mike Oldfield kind of thing. Maybe not so much like him, but that kind of new age sound, you know. Um, but overall, pretty listenable. Uh, some of it's a little repetitive, but um, I got to give this another spin to uh, get my whole my whole review out yet. So I well, only listened to it once last night, and I did enjoy it. I mean, this one's going to be kind of a grower, I think. And then uh, picked up on two LPs here. As you guys probably saw in the video, uh, Deep Water. This is one that, it's like a lounge group based out of St. Paul, Minnesota, which is pretty close to uh, South Dakota. So yeah, a lounge group that did songs by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. It's a couple Beatles tracks. Um, Bobby McGee, they do a cover of. I'll probably upload a couple tracks onto my other channel from here. But uh, Deep Water, nothing crazy, but... Pretty decent. I've got to take the price tag off this one. Paid like eight bucks. This is their uh, other live album. Um, I don't know what it's called. It just says Deep Water, but the whole side too is like this kind of comedic sideshowy thing, which I, I turned that off right away. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Then I picked up on another copy of Fat Mattress. Um, I already have a copy, but I figured might as well pick this up while it's cheap. It is a cheap record already. It's like 10 bucks or so, but I got it for 5 bucks, and it's pretty clean shape, so I might pass this along to someone or take it to the shops. Okay, and then the last one, which was kind of a nice surprise, even though it's not really up my alley so much, but I might you know, sell this down the road, but this is The Smiths, Meat is Murder. Um, I think it came out in 85. Correct me if I'm wrong, Smith fans, but <laughs> um, as you can tell, I don't I don't even know how to describe this album because I've never really gave it a full listen, but I imagine it's kind of jangle pop. Is that about right? Jangle pop, post-punk sort of sounds. Um, yeah, I've never really dove into the Smiths, but I don't know where even to begin. I think I've heard some of The Queen is Dead in the past, but all their songs, can, from what I've heard, kind of sound alike. They really do. Price sticker on there. Um, it's on the Sire label, and it's pretty clean. I only paid a dollar for it, which is kind of cool. So, uh, still got a hype sticker here as well. I forgot to take the dollar off. Um, I'm sure you guys spotted this in that previous video. And that about does it. So, uh, thanks for tuning in again. Um, like I said, I do have a couple nice UK originals coming in. Um, I think I do have few more coming in as well, a couple reissues and some other stuff, but yeah, like I said, it's been kind of dry out there this year, and it's not getting a whole lot, but that's okay. Um, that's, that's totally fine, because my life's kind of busy as it is, as far as uh, not just records, but other things going on, so um, till then, take care, hope you guys enjoyed, and check out Quintessence, check, check it all out really, and we shall see you soon.